told you. Who told you? Who told you? Who told you? you what? God design, God design. What's going on? How's everybody doing today? We back with another live episode. Thanks for joining. Reporting to you live from the barrel of the beast with a barrel full of crabs. I'm your host, Jordan Pittman. And we here. What's up with my board buddies? Want to tell y'all I'm excited to be here. I'm very excited as always. Today we're going to be discussing if you want to be a breeder. And I'm going to talk to y'all a little bit about how I got started and how this tested my metal and how this being a breeder, it really will see what you made of. It's not easy. It's not for the faint of heart. It's something that's got to really be in your heart. If you decide that you're going to be a breeder, it's, things are not going to just work out the way that you expect automatically from the beginning. I remember when I first started, it started off with having a deep love for dogs. So if you love dogs, that's something that is going to be easy for you. Whatever you decide to do for your career, your passion for your life, to build your legacy or whatever you decide to do, it definitely got to be something that you love. And with these dogs, you're going to get started. You might get started early. You might have some great success. You will be one of the rare cases. Because in the beginning, it's tough. Unless you have um, somebody that's over you, that's already coming before you, that got started before you and is passing the game down to you, then it's easy. But uh, most of us, we don't have we don't have a, somebody that we, we, we start out looking for pets. And my love for the dogs come from my, my first dog. I told you all about him. His name is Bear. Well, his, he was Bear, a golden retriever, Chow Chow. And for me, the dog, it was the companionship. I like being able to just hang out with my boy. He went everywhere with me, like off leash. You know, he was just a neighborhood dog. And so that built my love for dogs as a boy. And going into cartoons, I guess, all of the animals, where I discussed that. With this dog, Bear, you know, he was just uh, my cousins and them little dogs. And uh, my friends was had a litter of puppies. They dog had got bred by the neighbor's dog. They had a litter of puppies and they was giving the puppies away. Me and my, my cousin went by his house. He wasn't there and they was giving the puppies away. So we got one and took it home with us. My cousin kept the dog for a little while and then he his mom wasn't having that. So we ended up with the dog, but the dog wasn't that tough. And that's when, I mean, you know, I didn't really select a dog that was just a dog that fell into our lap, the uh, dog breed. So Bear was like a cool dog because he had that chow chow in him, which made him feel like he was a fierce, a chow chow. They go up against, you know, the chow chow is like the Chinese hunting dog. And then the, the retriever, he, you know, was the calm and happy. So it was a really nice blend for where we lived at and in the city and the circumstances that we was coming up in because the dog wasn't ultra, ultra aggressive. He was just balanced, nice and balanced. And I, I started looking at dogs. Of course, I told you that my dog had got beat up a few times. He was out running the streets and got beat up, came back home. I felt bad about that. So I started looking into other dogs and I wanted to get a dog that could uh, hold it down for himself without you know getting scuffed up and coming back all roughed up. So I looked into the pit bull. And I wanted to have a pit bull so bad, I couldn't get another dog. I had to keep the dog. I couldn't get another dog because I was told we had a dog. And if I wanted another dog, I had to wait till I got grown and on my own, my own house, my own rules. And then I could have my own dog, as many dogs as I want, was what I was told when I get grown and on my own. But as a boy, I wanted a dog so bad, I kept the dog with my, with my friend. And we, we, was, we would go. We wanted to see all of the pit bulls and this is how was our first introduction to dog breeding we looked in the classifier section and go check out dogs and it gave us an idea of all the different styles and setups 
different kind of dogs and way people were doing dogs. And I end up with Bear. Bear was, uh, well, well, we didn't get, we end up with the pit bull. And we found one that was close. I love this dog so much. You know, we wanted to kick, we kept the dog at my homeboy's house. And he was a little pit bull. His name was Crook. And he was a terrorist. I mean, we had this dog shaking up everything. He was like with us all the time. And we were young. We thought a lot of the, what we were doing with the dog was rough stuff. One day we came home and the dog had, uh, we come home from school, the dog had made a mess in the house. And my dude, mom was upset. She was getting on his case and he told her, you know, she said, put that dog outside. And his response to her was, Jordan said to keep the dog in the house. So her response was, who is Jordan? And, you know, I was just a kid at the time. And uh, little, you know, we didn't know at that time that it would lead to this. Long story short, we come home from school a couple of days later and the dog was gone. We was crushed. We didn't know what happened. We was looking for the dog everywhere. We went across the street looking for the dog. The dog was gone. We were told the dog was stolen. So I was crushed. I mean, devastated. Remember how long I wanted this dog? I wanted this dog for a long time. And he was gone. So that, that crushed me. I didn't want another pit bull. No pit bull could replace Crook. I started looking at, I told you I started looking at the Molossa breeds. And this was going to be the dog for me. I looked at the Connie Corso. That was with the dogs that I started out first. And the Connie Corso is a little bit different than a South African Borble. They have quite a bit more protection instincts. These dogs, the Connie Corso has also got more herding instincts. And the dogs were a, a tad bit uh, aggressive. My dog had like 13 bites. And she was a good dog, though. She was one of the best dogs. She really was appropriate for the, the time and the stage of our lives that we were living in and the area that we were living in, it was all kind of stuff going on. You couldn't leave a box outside. Somebody would come and try to take it, just walking past. And I'll tell you all a story. One of the times I was in the house and uh, the dog was outside. I let the dog outside and I hear a lady screaming. Oh, my God, somebody get the dog. And I know it wasn't my dog. I, I look outside in the backyard. My dog was gone. I ran up, ran up to the front, and the dog was uh, headed back to the yard. As what's going on? And then as uh, what happened, she had done bit this lady on the butt. And the lady was like, that dog just bit me. I'm like, you OK? No, I'm not OK. You got a phone? I'm like, I started, I paused for a second. I said, yeah, I got a phone. She said, let me see your phone. I said, what's going on? She said, I need to call the ambulance. I said, where you going to, you need to go to the hospital? She said, yeah, I'm bleeding. I think I, he broke the skin. I need to go get a tetanus shot. I said, oh, ma'am, I don't know. I don't, don't call the police. I'll take you where to go. I'll take you where you need to go. I'll take you to the hospital. Come on, get in. And so I get her into the hospital, to the car. She's like, oh, my God, I can't believe lead it all the way there are you all right no i'm not all right and i didn't want you know when a dog bites someone you got to understand that you're responsible for that as a dog person you're going to be responsible if the dog person has to go to the hospital then they're going to want to know where that dog was at did this dog have a rabies shot it's a whole procedure and the protocols that come into play with a dog bites a person because we don't you know as a society we can't have just Vicious dogs up here, out here biting people uh, unprovoked. And the lady was walking down the street. And me as a dog person, I already understand that. Um, and you need to understand that the laws relevant to the dogs, especially in your neighborhood or your municipality, because they different in every municipality. So long story short, we were, uh, I'm telling the lady on the way to the hospital, like, look, you know, I think... You know, this a, you, you sure you want to go in there? I don't want to go in the hospital. You know, if we if we can't, 
I'm talking to her, the lady all the way up to the door. And I tell her like this, like, look, I don't, I don't feel good about this. I, I'll make sure that you're going to be OK. Please, let's not go in here. I was able to talk the lady out of it. But it's a very pressing situation. You know what I'm saying? You know, this is some of my life is in the, is up in the air at this time because I don't know as I'm going to get a case. I don't want to know it. I don't want my dog to get arrested. I don't want to get arrested. I don't want to get sued. I'm telling the lady I don't have anything. And uh, so that was just a, like the first person that the dog bit. Luckily, I was able to uh, negotiate. I gave the lady. Uh, I asked where she was on her way to. She was on her way to the uh, shelter. I said, come on, I'll take you to the shelter. And I um, I was like, what you need? You want to get something to eat or something on the way? She said, yeah, let's stop and get some cigarettes. I stopped, got her some cigarettes. And I took her to the, uh, took her to the, got her to the homeless shelter, shot her $40 or $60 or something to that effect. And I got off cheap on that one. The second time the dog bit someone, it was just, uh, it happened to be in my neighbor across the street, you know? And he was like, man, that dog bit me. He, I, I come outside and he's up on the fence. I'm like, dude, what you doing on the, like the dog with the, well, you know, clearly it was uh, understood. Like, yeah, man, the dog, the dog, she, she, she uh, didn't bite me, but she ripped my pants. He was like, man, I, it's cool. You know, so he headed on over to wherever he was going. He, and then I get a knock at the door a little bit later, maybe like 10 minutes later. And it's the dude he like, yo, man, you know, I, uh, I respect what you're doing. I like what you're doing over there with the dogs, but. You know, man, your dog did bit me. So what are we going to do about that? You know, my pants is ripped. It didn't get me, but my pants is ripped. So I was like, man, well, you know, what you want me to do? You want me to buy you some pants? I'll buy you some more pants. So I bought the dude. I saw him $30. And this is another case, another situation where I got off cheap. So how I end up with the border was I said to myself, this dog is this kind of corso. She biting you know, everybody, I tell people that come to my house, visitors, hey, man, the dog bite. You know, she cool because I'm not putting the dog up. The dog is, you know, just don't touch the dog. That was like my thing. Don't touch the dog. She'll come around to you and um, just ignore the dog. And people don't listen. People don't listen. They think that they, you know, especially when it comes to dogs, people have dogs that they home. And they feel like they understand dogs and they know about dogs they sell and they'll try to pet your dog or whatever and uh kiss for the dog come here and try to be nice for the dog but that's not effective with the wasn't effective with the course so she would accept you in the house even though she wasn't snarling and growling and you know trying to get at you like you would think of a dog that's getting ready to bite you but she would still bite you and people would try to try to pet her and then they would get bit. So she had like 13 bites. I told myself, I can't do this with no male kind of corso. So we start looking at the borbles. The borbles were what I really like about this breed is the companionship factor. And, uh, and, uh, <laughs> you feel me, Ra? They hard headed. So I got the I, I end up with the boar ball, and I like the the idea that the boar was didn't have the herding instincts. It didn't have a fighting background, right? And understanding that, I felt that that was more appropriate for me in the urban life, in the urban setting, um, where I'm gonna be having a lot of visitors. I got a lot of family that comes by, and I need a dog that was uh, because I did intend on. Very early on, from a boy, I, you know, I wanted to be, have puppies and stuff. You know, I, that was uh, it was before I became a father, so I had the puppies. I mean, well, I had the dogs. I just decided to import a dog. My first, and this is part of the reason that I do the show, is for everybody else that may be like me and maybe looking for some guidance or looking for some direction with the breed, and they don't, you know, you don't have a point of reference or you don't know where to start. So I just so happened to end up, you know, knowing that large breed dogs could have hip issues or issues with their hips. So I sought out a breeder that was a very ethical. Um, he had, I knew that he wasn't pressed for money. It seemed like when I looked at the American breeders and they didn't want, they weren't very welcoming. 
and I don't know what it was, but I could tell that they was trying to like hide something. I got a lot of experience dealing with people and I can catch, pick up like uh, when I'm on the telephone, I can listen and get a feel for like a person just off the, the phone. And I could tell that there was something that the people were trying to hide. That's how I felt. You know, they would seem like the price was skyrocket. I said, OK, cool. The price, you know, four thousand whatever, which was a lot of money at that time for a rare breed of dog. The normal price around there was like a, you could get the dogs from South Africa for a thousand. So they were saying four thousand, three, four thousand. I said, OK, cool. So, uh, you know, what puppies do you have? And then uh, instead of answering the question, they're going to tell me, well, you know, you can't breed the dog. You're not going to be able to breed this dog. You're not going to be able to tell me what I can and I cannot do. So, you know, like uh, they're going to be the authority over me. And it's just I'm all, I don't know what it is about authority. Maybe it's just my, um, you know, I just got a problem with people trying to tell you till I feel like we should all be able to be free and do what we want to do. As long as it doesn't affect someone else or it doesn't bother them or is not interfering with them or what they got going on. As long as you ain't hurt nobody, you should. I mean, it's free freedom. So I felt like they was trying to hide something. I decided to import my dogs from South Africa and because South Africa, the money was talking flat out. I knew that the exchange rate, I understood the exchange rate. I understand economics. Well, I don't know if I understand economics, but I understand math. And I know that numbers talk. And in South Africa, there was a lot of money at stake when they sell puppies. So I import my dog, fell in love with the breed. And because of that, I decided, you know, this is going to be the perfect this is an ideal dog to have for breeding for the city life and the lifestyle that we live. They're very loving and compassionate and um, what perfect for me, very comparable to the um, Golden Retriever, my original dog, but they had, they were more capable. And then, you know, Bear thought he was a, Bear thought he was a borble. Bear thought he was a borble, but he couldn't, he wasn't equipped. He just didn't have it. And he wasn't able to defend or protect himself. And the Borble was very comparable to the Golden Retriever Chow Chow in ideal and the mindset. You know, he wasn't never really looking for no trouble. He wasn't. But, you know, he when he decided to stand up for himself and take or uh, claim possession, you know, he was very intense and serious. And I like that about him. So I felt like this was the perfect breed. So if you're going to be a breeder, you got to find out what, you know, what fits into your life and what dog breed is uh, one that's going to be perfect for you. You got to have it. It's got to be perfect for you because I'm going to tell you something. Starting off in the game with these dogs, don't expect to make no money. You know, you just basically a pet owner for many, many years. You're not you're not going to um, you're going to be investing in your dogs. You're going to be trying to take good care of them. And if you're looking at it from a business standpoint, you know, you're going to take a lot of losses in terms of monetary losses because you, you got to take care of your dog every single day. And you're not able to breed the dog. I mean, you got to buy a stud dog if you're going to breed dogs or you're going to pay for a stud fee if you don't have one. You also need a female if you're going to consider yourself a breeder. So then you're going to have to feed both dogs or whatever all the way up until then. And from a business standpoint, you know, you're losing, 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 losing. And you got to be able to sustain that. And a lot of times people look at it as a, a losing, a losing an investment um, or a devaluing, you know, uh, you losing money. You just keep losing money and you might not ever make your money back. You know, you might not ever make a lot, make your money back. So that's why I say you got to love this dog thing. It's not about money. You know, you got to remember that you're trying to develop something that is going to be very different. Something that's going to stand the test of time. That's my goal as the breeder. I'm trying to have a dog, my own bloodline. My bloodline is going to last. It's going to outlast me and for, for what I uh, got going on. My, my, my legacy, I want to put a stamp in the game like Doberman did with the Doberman Pincher. You understand? I'm going to be a, with these with the board balls. That's my goal. And if, because I love dogs, I want to have, be responsible for having the ultimate dog that was ever produced of 
all dogs in the history. And I feel like, you know, me personally, this is my take on dogs and protection breeds, right? Because I done been through it all. I don't know if I told y'all before, you know, back um, when I was working at a restaurant, I used to work 14, 12, 14 hours every day, six days a week, come home, deal with my dogs. And then my, my neighbor, this is when I first got started. I was a young dude. You know, I told y'all I was hustling on my own, saving up my money to get my own house, to get my own dogs and have as many dogs as I wanted. And then my neighbor, you know, so it was, I was young. It wasn't no Taj Mahal. I wasn't living in Beverly Hills. You understand? It was a dangerous neighborhood. And my neighbor, you know, was like, he wants a dog. Now, this is going to be very important for people that's breeding dogs. You got to get along with your neighbors or you got to find some kind of common ground to balance because your dog's going to be barking and your dog's going to be doing all kinds of people. Some people just don't like dogs. And a uh, dog is not a human being. Some people don't have no respect for human beings, so they're going to have less respect for the dog. So my neighbor was, uh, he liked to get intoxicated off the alcohol. And, um, you know, he was an older dude. I'm a younger dude. I'm about 23 at the time. And, you know, he see, you know, traffic people coming and stopping, looking at the dogs and whatnot. He said, hey, little youngster, let me holler at you. So uh, I want one of them dogs. What's up? What's up, uh, dude? I want to get one of them dogs from you. I said, okay, I'm going to hook you up with a dog. Okay. And when, when that puppy's ready, then you let me know. I said, okay, I'll let you know. I got you, old school. So pass, fast forward. I got visitors coming over. My dude decide, you know, I don't know if he had too much to drink one day. I got clients I'm entertaining. And uh, he comes over. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, you, you're not about to give away my puppy, is you? You ain't selling my puppy. No, bro. No, bro. I'm a little busy right now. Um, but I will holler at you in a minute. You're gonna have to excuse us. So I sent him back over to the over to his house. And I come back when my client leave. I go straight over there. Let me tell you something, neighbor. The dog that you go get is the dog that I give you. You don't have no dog over here, bro. You understand? You don't come over here when I got client. Don't ever come over here again talking about what you're gonna do or what, what you got coming, or you know, you see what I'm saying. I'm trying to run a business. You understand? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So he throws his hands up. And you got to come. Hey, listen. Right is right. And wrong is wrong. I'm stand behind what I believe in. And that's how you got to be willing to do. You know what I'm saying? Regardless of a person being an elder or whatever. That's how I always have been. I'm going to say what I got to say and do what I got to do, regardless of how you feel about it. And however you want to go there, whatever you want to do after that, but that's how we're going to have to roll. Because I'm believe in righteousness and treating people fairly. So dude was like, okay, yeah, oh, okay. And he throw his hands up like this. Oh, okay. And turn and walk away from me in my face. I'm standing there. I'm, I don't care. Bruh, don't come over here again. So the other day, uh, next, it was a Friday night. And I'm in there. I'm in the restaurant, you know, putting in them long hours. Anybody have a restaurant, I tell you, a restaurant is a nightmare. It's a business that you're married to. I'm in there with making pies. Y'all know how to make pies, y'all. That's a pie. I know how to do this. And uh, my cousins come get a dog. He wanted to come get the dogs. I go over there and get the dogs. And my, he see my cousin. You know, when we inside the house, we hear this blah, 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 blah. Look, it's gunshots. They shooting outside. You know, like right outside. So I go outside. We go outside. We run outside. You know what I'm saying, cousin? And we looking around, we don't see no, we don't see no body. You know what I'm saying? But it sounds like the dogs is looking like confused. And uh, so later on, I'm down, you know, I get back to making the pies. And my brother was staying with me at the time. He was on down on his luck, my older brother. He didn't help make pies. He was at the house with his girlfriend. So he's sitting on the porch with his girlfriend and uh I leave. I say, I'm out, man. I got to go finish these pies up for tomorrow. And I hear this. I'm down in the, in the um, at this restaurant making pies. And I hear this. Kaplow, plow. Oh. 
So uh, it, it happens. You know, gunshots is common. And my bro, bro calls me, Jordan, Jordan, you need to get down here. I pick up the phone. Hello, Jordan, Jordan, you need to get down here, man. Somebody just shot Penny in the back. You know what I'm saying? So I, I uh, leave the spot. You know what I'm saying? I don't even remember if I locked the door. Ran down the street. You understand? Because we wasn't far away from the um, from where I stayed at, where I had was operating the restaurant. And uh, man, sure enough, somebody done shot my dog. She ran up under the porch. She ended there with a gunshot wound. And I hurried up, took my shirt off, you know what I'm saying, made a little tourniquet and I wrapped it up. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking all around. I already knew it was my neighbor. So this is just one of the things that you go through. I forget why I even started to elaborate on that. But it's a lot going on, you know, when you're urban in with these dogs. If somebody done shot my dog. I had a dog, two dogs shot. I done had two dogs killed from poison. Now, this dog that got first dog that got shot, let me tell you how raw borbles is. They took this dog took the gunshot and shrapnel. The bullet burst in the shrapnel. And then, but anyway, it was that's not the point. I done had dogs shot before. I done had dogs, two dogs poisoned before. I got I done had the neighbors call the police on me over a million times, probably. Okay. I don't know how many times. And you got to keep your head cool. You understand? The only time I really lost it was when they killed my dog. You understand? And I had got out. Well, it's not even getting out of character. It's the character that I am. If you killed my dog or you done did something to me, then you're going to have to deal with this other, you know, this, this, that's sad. So the neighbors killed my dog. That's the one that I'm still constantly beefing with. These are the things that you're going to go through as a breeder. Let me tell you something. And then on top of all of that, in the very beginning, you ain't selling no dogs. Don't nobody know who you are. Don't nobody even respect your name or your game just because you got some dogs. They're not automatically going to sell. So you're going to go through some tough times. It's really going to test your metal. You might have a litter of puppies and all of the puppies die. What you going to do if your mom don't have no milk? You're going to you going to cry. You can't cry. You got to keep on pushing. And that's what happens with this dog game. Then if you finally stick with it, you get to a point where where I'm at. You're not where I'm at now. This month, last month, I had 13,000 incoming calls. 13,000 13, incoming calls. That's, and now I don't know, you're going to have to deal with calls. You're going to have to be an internet. I'm not no broadcaster. I'm not no T, this, you know, this ain't, this is real. I'm not no TV show. I don't got no history in this. You're going to have to be a vid photographer, a videographer and a photographer. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have to be uh, operating a website, running a um, Facebook marketing, social media marketing. You're going to have to do all of these things. 13,000 phone calls. And I love and I pray for this. You understand? I slept on the floor and I said, I, as I said, if I could just find one home. For one of these dogs, I only had six. I couldn't sell six, and they was beautiful. I'll show you. I ended up keeping them, but let me, this gonna test you. And it gotta be something that you're really into. Your heart gotta be into it, because at the end of the day, you might not be able to depend on nobody else but yourself. And this is gonna be it's nobody else's responsibility but your own, you know. And it just can be very difficult. It's take, it could take a lot out of you. It could take a lot out of you. And you got to be willing to give you your all if it's something that you really want to do. When you know, don't let nobody deter you. You're going to have people that's going to be trying to knock what you got going on. You know, they're going to try to clown you or whatever for what you're doing. That's, that ain't got nothing to just do with dogs either. That can be with anything that you got going on. You know, people might try to naysay. Remember, it's not their vision, it's your vision. They don't, they don't um, you know, so they don't even think about what you got going, which is your idea. If you have an idea, they might try to hit you back with some um verbiage just right off the top of their head. And you can't you can't let that sway you. 
You understand? So this is how it goes. You got to, and that's with anything that you do. You got to believe in yourself. You got to, you got to know what you want. You got to be like willing to give your all for it. And there's no way that you cannot be successful if you consume your life with trying to be whatever it is that you choose. You know, with being who you are, being what you your purpose is. We all got a purpose here. So that's what I wanted to give y'all for today. If anybody got any questions, I'm here. You feel me? If y'all, if anybody got questions, I'm here to answer your questions. Um, I'm taking questions at this time. Oh, yeah. Let me take a, uh, I want to share this with y'all. So because of the 13,000 calls, right? That's a lot of calls. I get a lot of calls. And that's how I came up with this episode because I was trying to figure out what I was going to give if what I was going to have my show to be about today. And I was writing down some stuff. I'm not no, I'm not a writer. I'm not a um, much of a researcher. I was writing down some stuff and I kept getting phone calls. And it was like, I wanted to take my phone and I was upset with it. So, but I didn't do nothing to my phone because I asked for this. This is what I wanted. I got to come up with an idea. How can I better manage this? But I won't at the same time. So I'm always be here for y'all. If y'all got questions, if you, if anybody got questions, I'm going to be here for you. But we also going to start, we also going to start for, um, a breeders mentoring program. Oh yeah, I got a couple of announcements too. I wanted to tell y'all about coming up soon. We're gonna be opening up with uh, some franchises. We got franchise opening up coming up uh, near Ontario, near Ontario, Canada. So if y'all in the Ontario, Canada area, we got a very a special franchise opening up. Franchise opening up in Virginia. Franchise already established in the Arizona, y'all. If y'all in the Arizona area. Got a franchise out there, puppies on the ground out there in Arizona right now. We also got a franchise. That's the dog. Uh, I was, uh, I knew she was going to come back in at some point. Hey, Pearl. But um, I wasn't ready at that time. I didn't realize how much time got away from me. So we also got established uh, Mississippi very excited about the mississippi franchise opening up mississippi is a beautiful beautiful pearl beautiful territory come here and come here and the sun is always shining it's just some beautiful pictures that i get from down there that's coming soon i want to share this video with y'all this was another thing that we got it's another thing that we got going on. If y'all want to, um, oh my goodness, I'm sorry. I, I I don't. I'm I'm still getting new to this. Hey y'all, but y'all keep rocking with me, y'all, because guess what? It's gonna get better every time. It's gonna continue to get better. I promise you that. And it's never gonna be perfect, but it's gonna get better every time. So as I can, you know, I ain't like been doing this for um that long. This is all I know. I'm flowing. But I'm, I'm, I'm um, working it out. So check this video out, y'all. What's up, boar buds? You all know Jordan Pittman, a humble leader of the best African borable owners and a passionate dog enthusiast for 15 years now. He raises South African borable pups into dogs beyond what most people expect a large breed would be. And if he can do it, so can you. And he is more than happy to share, help, and teach you about everything you need to know based on his awesome experience raising South African Borables. You can schedule consultations with him and ask him anything, and I mean anything, and become an awesome breeder. Learn everything that you can from our past experience, avoid making mistakes that have been made before, talk, listen, and learn, and vow to one day in the future, share all that you have learned with a newcomer to the breed. If you are ready to be awesome, please reach him on these details for pricing information. 
Believe, he is very excited to chat with you and help you become an amazing breeder. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed that. Uh, and that's going to be it for today. My contact details is the same. Working on the website, I'm going to get busy on the website. I'm trying to make it a better experience for y'all, make it easier, more simpler, more attractive. It's a lot of work being, um, but it's what I love to do. If anybody got questions, I'm going to take a couple questions. If not, I'm going to catch up with y'all. I'm going to get back with my, get back to my, uh, <laughs> you heard me. <laughs> Crabs in the barrel. Yeah. That's where I, that's where we stay at. And that's how it is. But I love it though. We're going to try to change the crabs into uh, ants. Ants work together. They don't try to pull each other back. You feel me? All right, Ra, Big Bra. You, I can't wait to see that dog, bro, bro, bro up. My boy, Ra. We got merchandise on the way. Franchise opening up. Don't forget to hit up bubblepuppy.com and subscribe. Peace, y'all. Enjoy y'all. Rest of y'all day. We're gonna. I'm gonna catch up with y'all on the weekend. Y'all got my number. You got my line. If you need me, I'm here. No rush, go on, move dumb. Back and forth, push and shove. Make your peace and love turn to peace and gloves. Now you got a deal run up. No rush, go on, move dumb. Back and forth, push and shove. Make your peace and love turn to peace and. Now you got a deal run up. Bogan, 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 Bogan,